I first became involved with the charity to support Emma in her way forward. Emma has always seen that there needs to be medical input into the charity so that what they advocate and what they say um, has appropriate medical um, uh, background and information. Um, and therefore I'm involved in um, making sure that that really does happen. The ketogenic diet is a, a therapy that's been around for a very long time. It's been around almost 100 years. Individ what it is is a high-fat diet designed to mimic the effects of the bod on the body of starvation. When we starve, we produce ketones. We break down our own body fat and produce ketones. And it was discovered a considerable time ago that starving and only having water can improve seizures. The clinician in the 1920s, therefore, suggested that if we had fat as our main calorie intake, we would need to break that down in order to produce energy and produce ketones, and this could mimic the effects on the body of starvation. And indeed, when this diet was trialled originally in the classical form, um, it was shown that it could have benefits in epilepsy. There are several theories, in fact, there are many different pathways on which, metabolic pathways on which the ketogenic diet is thought to work through various components. However, there are some thoughts that maybe it's the low sugar that may actually be beneficial. Others think that maybe there's some genetic changes. Others think that um, maybe it's a component of the diet, namely the medium chain fatty acids that may actually be changed. However, it may be different components of the diet are beneficial in different types of epilepsy or different causes of epilepsy. So it may be that one size doesn't fit all. It's not the same answer for everybody. There are two different reasons as to why um, the diet isn't promoted as much perhaps we would like. The first one is that traditionally it's been thought of as it's a dietary treatment as a non-medical treatment. And there are so many other dietary treatments that have really been put out there of different, for different conditions, which really are not scientifically based. We now have evidence based in a true randomised control fashion that this diet can work where that the individual children have failed the drugs. In adults, we haven't got RCT data as yet, although there's some increasing data, then it may be worth trying. The next problem we have, and where that may be used in an excuse, is the fact that it does need a dietetic resource. It, it's not a diet you can just go on reading a book and, and make sure that, you know, and, and follow instructions. You need some dietetic support to know that the nutritional basis to the diet is appropriate, and particularly in children, to make sure they're growing appropriately, they're getting the right number of vitamins, they're getting the right amount of minerals within their diet so that they're not um, nutritionally deficient. And therefore, because this does need additional support, there's the, the counterbalance of more expense versus the belief, well, let's find an excuse as to why it shouldn't be used. To parents who want to try this diet or are thinking about it, they need to discuss that with the doctor who looks after their epilepsy. It's not a diet that someone can just have a list of instructions and go and do. We need to monitor the children. We need to make sure they're getting the right mineral and vitamin supplementation and the right number of calories to ensure that they grow properly. When we start the diet, they're not on it for the rest of their lives, no. We normally um, initiate it for three months to see whether there's been any benefit. If there's been no benefit at all, and in the very small number of children, just like with any drugs, they can get worse, then we take them off the diet. We don't leave them on. If the diet, however, proves to be beneficial, we usually suggest that we're going to try it for two years and then decide whether maybe we can try and wean the diet and see whether they still need it. Epilepsy goes through different phases. The brain develops with time. And sometimes it may be that after a period of time on the diet, there isn't such a high need for it. Sometimes children, of course, decide for themselves. And with time, they decide that they don't want to be on it any longer and therefore are weaned off. I think that um, all parents should have a discussion as to whether this is something they wish to try. It's a choice, it's a treatment that's available that could work and may have just as much chance of working as another anti-epileptic drug when two drugs have failed. 
So that discussion needs to be undertaken with the family. They may decide at that stage it's not the right way to go and they may want to wait. Others may never want to try it. Others want to try it earlier and we do not ever think this is a first line treatment because it is quite a change in lifestyle. However, not having that opportunity and to find out about it five or six years later doesn't do anybody a service. Matthew's Friends makes a huge difference with regards to support for families. Not only for families on the diet, but families finding out about the diet and even families who may have been on the diet and, and found it difficult and have come off. They provide information, they provide um, answers to questions that may not be readily available from the medical profession or indeed dietitians as they're busy. They provide recipes that could be trialled under obviously dietetic guidance. They provide an enormous amount of information. They've also been funding various aspects of research and also in some educational support for both families and professionals, so, um, which is something that's been lacking. When Matthew's friends um, initiated or when were started, they were very keen about trying to promote um, services within individual areas, help support dietitians, which they continue to do in the fact that they provide support and, and um, resources that dietitians can use. However, it's been very difficult to convince hospitals and, and that they need more dietetic services. And therefore, um, Matthew's Friends have developed the young Matthew's Friends clinics whereby they can provide a dietetic or, or, or a ketogenic diet service with the support of local paediatricians. The children remain under the local paediatricians and they make major decisions with regard to medication and health. But what ketogenic, the ketogenic diet clinics are doing, the Matthews Friends clinics are doing, are providing the diet and the dietary support for um, a trial and a, a, a fixed period of time. Of course, there also isn't a resource for the adults and what Matthew's Friends Clinics can do is provide a dietetic service for adults, again, wishing to have the support of the neurologist and the GP who may be looking after the adult. Matthew's Friends has grown considerably since my initial involvement, to some degree with regard to staffing, but actually with the degree to which it, um, it is known worldwide, it's now global, the number of families that are aware and involved with it, the amount of support that it gives, its educational support that it gives both to professionals and families, and of course now the development of the clinics at Young Epilepsy, the Matthews Friends Clinics, supporting not only children and families who wish to go on the ketogenic diet, but also adults who wish to try the ketogenic diet. There's a considerable way forward, however, we can go. We still need to raise awareness of the diet. We still need to do more research, which Matthew Friends have also supported, in determining which groups of children and adults the diet may be best suited. And certainly they wish to be involved and will be involved in further trials in the future in order to, to prove its success or not, as the case may be. Certainly we wish it to be a choice in treatment for children and possibly and adults, um, not to be something that they have to fight for repeatedly for consideration. Mm -hmm.